Wisdom from our 2017 world champion Diego Casaraga. But now the torch is going to be passed to one of our two players that we have up on the stage right now. Robin is a veteran. He has played so much of the Pokemon TCG at such a high level for quite a while now. But his opponent, Jeff Polink from Canada, is a relative newcomer to the scene. He has card game experience, but as far as Pokemon goes, this is his first year competing at the world championships. And he's already found himself in the finals. Yeah, and one of these two players, they're going to be added to this legacy of the World Championships, right? We saw that video at the opening there showing the history of the World Championships, uh, joining a player like Diego, who I actually played against at the 2005 World Championships, someone who's just been in the community forever. And uh, this is it. This is what we've come for. This is what an entire year's worth of work has led up to. And without further ado, let's throw it over to Anna on the stage and introduce our players. Welcome to the 2018 Pokemon Trading Card Game World Championship Finals. This is going to be a great match, and I'm so excited to bring out your players. Get yourselves ready to cheer first for, from Germany, Robin Schultz! And from Canada, Jeff Colling! Robin and Jeff, we cannot wait to watch you play. Please shake hands. Take your seats. And casters, this is going to be a great one. What do you think? Anna, we could not be more excited to kick off our Masters Division Finals here for the Pokemon Trading Card Game. Two very, very talented players here up on the stage fighting for the title of 2018 World Champion. Let's go and check out their road to get to this point. Of course, we broke it down to the top eight yesterday and played down all the way to our finalists today. Yeah, we see on the left side, Robin Schultz had to battle through Brian Miller and that Zorark Glycified deck. He won in uh, two pretty close games in the top eight and then had to go up against the fan favorite, Clive, taking out that Clive. Zygarde <laughs> GX in a six to one comeback in game number two to advance to the finals. So a tough road for Robin and he's played excellently to get here. Uh, I don't actually think he's dropped a game yet in the single elimination round. So. We'll see if he can continue that streak. Yeah, that final match from Robin yesterday at a five prize card deficit and managing to mount an incredible comeback. It was something for the record books. It would only be right for Robin to take this world championship title, but it's not going to come easily. He's got Jeff Kolink on the other side of that table, and he is not going to be going down without a fight. But from Robin, you can see all of these accolades, all of these accomplishments. Yeah, a very accomplished player. Uh, both Robin and his brother, Philip have plenty of accomplishments in the Pokemon TCG. And you see one of those trademark cards, Town Map, a card we do not see very often. Uh, just says, turn all of your prize cards face up. Gives you a little bit more information I hope we get to see that played in this match. We got to see it a couple times yesterday. Worked out pretty well for him. And on the other side of the table, his opponent from Canada in his first showing at the World Championships, it is Jeff Polank. And <laughs> here you can see that list of accomplishments is blank. But after today, there's going to be one very prestigious accomplishment up there. And it might read 2018 Masters Division World Champion. Yeah, D Jeff has had a much different run through the top eight. I think both of his matches went to game three. He played that insane match against Pedro yesterday where uh, so many crazy things happened. I got to watch his top eight match as well, where he actually advanced to the top four using Lunala's, Lunala Prism Star's Psy Storm attack for 200 damage to knock out a Lycanroc GX. So we're seeing all sorts of crazy stuff. And Jeff, actually, this deck came from a good friend of his on the Canadian scene who got a top eight finish at the North American International Championships with this list in particular. So Jeff himself may not have the history of accomplishments in the Pokemon card game, but he has plenty of friends who have helped him along the way. And you know what? This is all that matters. He's earned his spot here in the finals. And now it's time to get this match underway. All right, let's do it. Masters Division Finals.
here at the 2018 Pokemon TCG World Championships between Robin Schultz and Jeff Kolank. And Robin going to start off perfectly here, playing a mysterious treasure for that Tapu Lele GX, getting the turn one Bridget. This is a perfect start to Robin's uh, finals match here. I played three copies of the Bridget into the deck. This is exactly what he wants to see on turn one. And getting a chance to attach energy before his opponent as well is going to be uh, a very powerful start for Robin here. Yeah, and an interesting thing about Robin's deck list, he plays zero Ultra Ball. Uh, that is a card we see four of in almost every single deck. But he plays zero. He instead plays four Mysterious Treasure, uh, perhaps valuing just not having to discard two cards with Ultra Ball as opposed to just discarding one for Mysterious Treasure. Uh, it still searches out Tapu Lele GX, which is probably the most important thing to find on the first turn of the game. And then he plays three Evo Soda, but just blew my mind. There's no Ultra Ball in this deck. It, it does seem like a really risky decision to make because Mysterious Treasure can't search out Zerua, can't search out Zoroark. Of course, it can get you the Tapu Lele, the Trubbish, and the Garboder. But if he does not have a Zerua setup and an Evo Soda for that Zoroark, it could be a little bit more difficult for Robin to get Zoroark online and get those trades going as early as possible. But clearly, he hasn't run into any issues with it. Otherwise, he wouldn't have brought this list. Yeah, Jeff also playing for Mysterious Treasure in his deck. That one makes a little bit more sense. Uh, he's running a deck full of Psychic Pokemon. Uh, interestingly enough, he only plays one Tapu Lele GX in his deck. And if it happens to be in his prize cards, this could be a bad opening for him, as he is searching through quite a bit. He has a very teched out version of this Psychic Malamar build with just single copies of so many Pokemon. Dawnwings, Necrozma, Mewtwo GX, Necrozma GX, that Tapu Lele, Oranguru with the Instructability, as well as uh, the Giratina that is intended to counter Greninja builds, and uh, the Mimikyu with that Filch attack. So Jeff starting off with this Mewtwo GX, and this is actually a pretty important card in this matchup. Uh, we saw this a little bit at the North America International Championships with Adam Hawkins. Uh, Mewtwo GX, its attacks aren't very intimidating besides Psy Strike GX, but what it can do early on is go after Trubbish and Garboder. The key to this matchup is Garbotoxin Garboder on Robin's side. And Mewtwo, with its full burst or super absorption attacks, can take down those Trubbish and Garboder early if Jeff's able to find Guzma. It is going to be absolutely necessary. If Robin does get the Garbotoxin Garboder online early, then all of Jeff's energy acceleration from the Psychic Recharge ability of Malamar is going to be shut off. And there oh, are only two field blowers in Jeff's deck. Goodness. Robin already with two Zorark GX in play. And a Floatstone on Trubbish. Looks like this is going to be an excellent turn two from Robin. Follows it up with an N. If he can find that Garbotoxin Garboder. And a double colorless energy, he's going to be off to a huge lead at the beginning, especially because we saw one field blower is in Jeff's prize cards. He only plays two, and those are going to be key to uh, getting back his abilities against that Garbotoxin. So one field blower available in the deck, three Guzma in the deck as well. Could be a little bit difficult for Jeff to bring up that Garboder and actually knock it out to resume Psychic Recharging onto the bench. Mysterious Treasure can fetch that Garboder. All right, so we're going to see the first of uh, Robin's trades here with Zorark GX. This is one of the most powerful cards in the Pokemon TCG right now. A very simple ability. Discard a card, draw two cards. And at first glance, that doesn't seem very exciting, but then you go, oh, I have two of these in play. I can do it twice. And as we're going to see Robin do, oh, Town Map <laughs> has been played. The Robin special. <laughs> Prize cards are now face up. Our prize cam not going to do very much, but we got prize cam V2 for Robin special. <laughs> but Robin also has Evo Soda in hand, so he's going to get the dream start. Turn to triple Zorark GX. I think he has the uh, the Garboder in the hand as well. This is a very powerful start from Robin and Jeff as well. Had a nice setup. He's got the Inke ready to evolve into Malamar. But if Robin does finish his trading and, and want to get that Garboder online this turn, and Jeff does not have a Field Blower to knock off that Float Stone, he's not going to be able to use Psychic Recharge, even if he has the Malamar. 
You see the slow zoom out. Look at that. You can see the prize cards face up oh, yeah. for Robin. <laughs> and the only thing missing on this turn is double colorless energy. He's going to try to trade one more time and find that energy card, but it looks like he did not find it. So even though he drew a lot of cards this turn, an N for six, three trades for six more cards, unable to find double colorless energy. All right, so we have an N, two Evo sodas, a field blower, and a parallel city in the prizes for Robin. And I hate to say I didn't catch the sixth one. I was too busy writing them down. <laughs> the lock has been established. Turn to Garbotoxin for Robin. So no, ah, Cynthia. No, Thanks, um, no psychic recharge available for Jeff at this point. He's going to need to find Guzma to go after that Garboder with his Mewtwo or he needs to find the single field blower that's left in his deck. This is a terrible position for him to be in right now. So much pressure so early from Robin, and Jeff's deck does take a fair amount of time to set up, and as well, the choice that he's made to put in so many single copies of these Pokemon to have all of these tech choices for various matchups means that he doesn't have an incredibly consistent attacker. He doesn't really have... Um, a primary attacker that he wants to Psychic Recharge to in every game. It's going to vary based on the game. Uh, we do see he has a pair of Marshadow GX in the deck, which, with its ability, can copy the attacks of basic Pokemon in your discard pile. And then that fighting typing, of course, makes it excellent against the Zoroark. So very likely that Jeff is going to want to find that Marshadow um, at some point and make use of that. But for now, he is going to go for that Lunala Prism Star, which you said was very powerful for him earlier on in the tournament. Yeah, he used it in both top eight and top four. It's a side storm for big knockouts, and it's going to be huge for him in this match as well. One of the ways you can still get energy in play, well, he did draw his field blower, but uh, if you are unable to get your abilities back, you can use that full moon star attack and get a bunch of psychic energy from the discard onto your Pokemon. Uh, it usually ends up with Lunala Prism Star getting knocked out because it does have a weakness to darkness, but... It's usually worth it. If you can get three or four energy, it's huge. All right, there's the field blower, which means Jeff will have full access to Psychic Recharge this turn. We'll have to see exactly how many energy he does have in the discard pile here. Looks like two. Yeah, this could be a big, big turn for Jeff. He uh, field blowers away the floatstone, gets access to his abilities, and he's already put... Necrozma GX in the discard pile. So if he can grab a Marshadow GX here, Psychic Recharge a couple times, attach, he can Prismatic Burst and get a quick knockout on Robin Zoroark GX. This is an amazing turn two from Jeff. It's very, very important. Zoroark's ability stacks in strength. The more Zoroark you have, the better it is. So by taking out one very quickly, taking a quick two prize card lead, Jeff then puts himself in a rather favorable position moving forward. And we do see he finds that Marshadow. Likely going to see Psychic Recharge attaching a couple Psychic Energy onto that Marshadow this turn. Yeah, and Marshadow GX is in this deck almost strictly because of Zorark GX. Uh, even though Marshadow GX will be copying the attacks of Psychic Pokemon, it, it itself is a fighting type Pokemon. So it's going to hit that Zorark GX for weakness and get a one hit knockout. Poor Marshadow has to pretend to be someone else. <laughs> so there we do see Jeff taking the first knockout here in the finals. He's gonna take a two prize card advantage. That's important because he did have a field blower in his prizes. If he was able to find it there off of the prize draws, then the next tool card that Robin attaches to that Garboder will just be blown away. Yep. One of the unfortunate parts of Marshadow GX is it has 150 HP. So against Zorark GX, if you have a full bench, six Pokemon in play, plus a choice band, they can actually use Riotous Beating for a knockout. So a lot of the time, Marshadow GX is taking a big knockout, but then immediately getting knocked out in return. Trading away that unit energy. Uh, important to note, Robin is playing the Kartana GX. Its ability Slice Off can remove a special energy from your opponent's side of the board. And then you do have Blade GX, to immediately take a prize card for one metal energy. So that's why you're seeing the unit energy in this deck. It's a dual psychic and metal type. Uh, Robin was able to draw into double colorless energy this turn, so he can power up Zorark GX if he wants to. 
He also has an N in hand and a choice band. Looks like he's going to trade one more time before making any decisions, trying to sequence things the best that he can. Double colorless attached to the active Zoroark. There is choice band. And he's actually just going to play okay. Bridget for the turn. That's Fill up his bench so he can use Riotous Beating for that one-hit knockout. Yep, we get 120 damage from the Riotous Beating. If there's a full six Pokemon in play, and then Choice Band for the extra 30, is exact damage needed to knock out this Marshadow GX. Take two prizes of his own. And now Jeff will need to be sending in another attacker. He's got the Lunala Prism Star on the bench, which can accelerate energy. Or you have that Mewtwo GX as well. The big question is, does Robin have another Pokemon tool card to reactivate that Garbotoxin on the bench? If not, Jeff's going to have an opportunity to get another Marshadow GX into play and take another two prize cards. I do want to say there's a Float Stone in hand for Robin, I believe. Yep, right there, the uh, first card in his hand. So we'll see if he wants to attach that. He does. And there we go. Robin with the perfect answer here, taking out that Marshadow GX, tying up the game at four prizes apiece. And if Jeff did not get that a field blower out of his prize cards, he's going to be in some trouble. We see Robin, because he played Town Map earlier on, knows exactly what he's getting from his prizes. Takes Cynthia in Parallel City, leaving two Evo Sodas, a field blower, and an N. So <clears throat> Jeff has an interesting spot here. He has Guzma in hand, as well as a Psychic Energy. He could go after that Garbotoxin Garboder. Uh, the alternative option would be attached to Lunala Prism Star play Professor Sycamore and uh, try to get something else in place so you can full moon star and get a bunch of energy out. We'll see what he decides to go with. The uh, Acrobike sending the Giratina promo to the discard pile. Not a very relevant card in this matchup. And Jeff is still trying to decide. Looks like he is committing to Lunala Prism Star. Uh, one of the Prism Star Pokemon that we don't see very often. It was initially seen in Malamar decks for kind of this situation, times where you just don't have access to abilities and you can use an attack to get a bunch of energy onto your Pokemon. Looks like he is going to use it here, putting an energy on his Malamar. Uh, he might be trying to power up Malamar so he can Guzma oh, right. out Garboder and uh, knock it out. <laughs> you know what? When... You have to get creative. Sometimes you do things that are not optimal, but they can be good enough. So he's going to attach to both the Mewtwo and the Malamar on the bench, prep either of those Pokemon to be able to come up and take a knockout. And it, it really is kind of surprising that Lunala Prism Star is not more popular because you're, you're seeing the incredible power of this Pokemon. A basic Pokemon, 160 hit points, which is very high. The ability to accelerate energy and take massive knockouts in a meta where energy is rather dense. You're seeing quite a bit of energy. Yeah, the biggest thing holding back Lunala Prism Star was the weakness to darkness. Uh, that 160 HP is not a lot when Zorark GX just hits you for 240. Uh, that's why we haven't seen the card too much, but you can see why it's so powerful. Uh, just like that, Jeff powered up a bunch of Pokemon, but even after that, I have to think Robin feels like he's in a pretty good position uh, his opponent didn't put any pressure on him. He's going to be able to take another prize card this turn if he wants. So far, this game has been dominated by Robin. With that first Marshadow having been knocked out so quickly. Jeff's game plan in this one is a little bit up in the air. What does he want to commit to to try to get these last two GX knockouts? And if he doesn't have that field blower, he will not be able to Psychic Recharge. And then his game plan is kind of out the window. So interesting play from Robin. Um, he decides to play the end here. I don't think Jeff played a supporter card on his previous turn, but Robin felt like there was something suspicious going on. Uh, so he's going to play this end, reset both players to four cards in hand, and uh, go for the rightest beating knockout. And I mean, Jeff's going to be in a terrible position. He has nothing good to attack with. He has no access to abilities, and uh, this this matchup seems to be. Pretty heavily favored for Robin. Could be seeing a repeat of the North American International Championships where Zoroark Garboder did take the title 
been looking like it's very possible that Robin Schultz can do the same here. Jeff Kolink on the back foot this entire game. That Garbotox and Garboder just disrupting his game plan too significantly. He is going to promote the Malamar without any energy on it. Uh, that Lunala Prism Star does need to go to the Lost Zone. It does. Prism Star cards, that's one of their caveats. When they are removed from play, you do not get access to them again. Yep. Can't rescue Stretcher that back. Not that you'd necessarily want to, but you can't do it. So Jeff here, uh, he's promoting this Malamar with no energy on it. He has Guzma in hand. I think he has to go after the Garbotoxin, Garboder on the bench. There's really no other way he can continue to power up his attackers, but even if he does that, Robin's at three prizes. If he knocks out Malamar, he's down to two. Uh, Jeff just does not have a good path to victory here. So he plays the Guzma. I mean, there's three Garboder on the bench, one Garbotoxin, uh, which is locking down your abilities, and two Trash Lanch, which will essentially knock out your entire deck for one energy. It's a, it's a Hydra. Knock out one and two will take its place right now. Jeff desperately Ooh. trying to find the line here that keeps him in this game. And uh, he thinks it is Guzmaing up the Trash Lanch Garboder with energy on it. Yeah, I think Jeff realizing uh, if I knock out that trash alert, or the Garbotoxin Garboder, my opponent gets access to trade again. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, they're probably just going to keep finding energy to power up Trash Lanch, and this game is going to be over very quickly. So uh, Jeff doing whatever he can to give himself a chance in this game. There is some chance that Robin just doesn't have the cards he needs, that he's affected by his own ability lock. We'll see if it pays off. And also, Jeff just doesn't have anything that he wants to Psychic Recharge to on his bench right now. So Cynthia for Robin, going to shuffle in and draw six. I have to assume there are at least five item cards in Jeff's discard pile. So if Robin is able to find a unit energy, he can trash a lanch for the knockout, go down to one prize card, and basically seal up this first game in the finals. There's just no coming back from that. He does find it. Jeff has no backup plan here. This Mewtwo, he's gone kind of all in. Let's see what Robin draws off of these six cards. He could draw a double puzzle of time. He could draw a unit energy, and there it is. He does find the unit energy. I think we're going to see a trash lanch, and Robin's going to go down to one prize card. He has just dominated this first game. Mewtwo GX with that psychic weakness. This trash lanch is more than enough damage to take the knockout. Take two prize cards, leaving Robin with just a single prize card remaining. And Robin Schultz has just looked so comfortable this game. He's been going through the motions, playing very confidently. You can tell that he's a seasoned competitor, and this is it's just another day for him. <laughs> very important day, though. Yeah, probably one of the more important games of Pokemon he's ever played, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we, you would expect nothing less from a world-class competitor like Robin Schultz. Uh, he plays the game a lot. He's got great testing partners. Uh, the European players have dominated the Pokemon TCG this season, whether it was Tord Reklev winning multiple international championships, Stefan Avinov winning the North America international championships, um, it is no surprise to see yet another European player in the finals here at the World Championships. But interestingly enough, Robin would be the first world champion from Germany in the Masters division. So, really? Yes. We had um, another German representative actually in the juniors division taking the North American International Championships. I believe it was Kaya Lichtleitner. So Germany coming in full force. Yep. So at this point... I'm not sure what Jeff's plan is. Um, his opponent has a Zorark GX with a double colorless energy ready. Uh, that means Malamar is going to get knocked out by Riotous beating. Yeah. What, uh, how does he and, I mean, if lock he, a Pokemon for Robin in the active to give himself more time, I suppose? Is it time for hypnosis? <laughs> it might be hypnosis time. I've seen it before. If ever he needs to get lucky... Uh, it's now. Yeah. If you remember back to Adam Hawkins 
and all of those hypnosis, sleep flips, keeping him in the game in the top four of the North America International Championship. I do remember that. that goodness. <laughs> that was be, something. Could be seeing it again. It didn't um, work out so well uh, there. No, it bought him some time. <laughs> Did not change the outcome of the match, but oh. it could have. But hey, if you're on Plan Z, but you have Plan Z, you go for Plan Z. Even if there's a small, small percent chance that it could end up turning the game around for you, you owe it to yourself to take that chance. You've made it this far. This is, this is not a game where you are ever going to quit. And we're going to see that Inke come up. And it is hypnosis time. Here we go. If Robin flips heads, he wins. Tails. Tails. All right, but still. All right, so we're going to see how uh, greedy Robin wants to be here. I think he has a field blower in hand. He could field blower away his own float stone and then trade twice to try to draw into the game winning Guzma. Uh, Guzma it, bring it, up a Malamar, promote that Zoroark, and ride us beating for the game. Sometimes it's risky, but in this position, I'm finding uh, a hard time believing that Jeff could even come back if he got access to abilities again. Yeah, I mean, he still just has nothing. Yeah. to attack with. And Robin could simply draw another tool. Uh, I think this is a safe position. He even uh, has he also, Evo Soda for... He, yeah, he could even get a, a third Zorak. And there we see Guzma. Robin Schultz takes game number one here in the finals of the World Championships. He has yet to drop a game in the top eight. He's actually undefeated in this tournament. He was the number one seed heading into top cut. And he is now one more game away from being crowned world champion. A 5-0 and 2 record going into the top eight yesterday. Has not dropped a game in that top eight cut. Now potentially we could be seeing Robin Schultz as an undefeated record taking that world championship title. Jeff Kolink just off to a rough start in that one. Robin had a demanding lead throughout that entire game. What does Jeff need to do differently this game? to be able to take it to game three. Well, fortunately, Jeff is gonna be going first in game number two, which is a big difference. We saw in game one, Robin went first. He got to evolve to Garboder and get Garbotoxin up and running before Jeff had a chance to use any of those psychic recharge abilities. Uh, when Jeff goes first, he gets a little more breathing room to set up some of his Pokemon before he has the threat of that Garbotoxin. So, uh, Having that extra turn of buffer is going to be a big deal, and uh, he's got to find a way to stop that Garbotoxin. Guzma out those Trubbish as fast as you can, and just hope your opponent cannot disable your abilities. You, know, you mentioned Robin is undefeated. He does have one tie. Yes. But um, the last time we've seen an undefeated world champion was actually the very first world championships in 2004, Sugiyoshi Yamato. Uh, went undefeated in the Swiss rounds and then won the World Championships, and I don't believe we've seen that ever since. That is a very rare occurrence indeed. So many incredible players across the field to play through seven rounds of Swiss in a single day and not lose a match. That's quite an accomplishment, but now it's down to game number two. I believe we're gonna see a mulligan here from Jeff Polank. Did not find a basic in that first hand. So he's gonna have to shuffle in his hand, draw a fresh seven cards until he gets a basic Pokemon, and then Robin will get an additional card to start the game. I believe Robin actually had two mulligans in the first game, So Jeff started off that game with uh, two extra cards, but it did not end up mattering. All right, looks like he did find one now, deciding on what he wants to start this game with. Alrighty, we are getting set up for game two here in the World Championships between Robin and Jeff. Cora, do you think Jeff can make the comeback here? <sighs> <laughs> Town map is prized. No! The humanity. <laughs> I think Jeff can do it. I think Jeff has already over overcome so many odds in this tournament to make it to this point. I certainly think he can take this to game number three. All right, we'll see if he can pull it off. He's going to... Have a tough road ahead with two Max Elixir in his prize cards. Or I guess how many Max Elixir he plays. 
Hmm. Uh, is it two? It's two. Yes. That's unfortunate. <laughs> he does begin the game with Mysterious Treasure, though. Getting a Psychic Energy in the discard pile, this is exactly how you want to start the game. Get those energy in your discard pile so you can Psychic recharge them with Malamar and start to power up your big attacking Pokemon like Necrozma GX or Marshadow GX. Looking good so far for Jeff. Definitely being able to go first is going to give him an advantage in this one. Hopefully he can start getting out those Malamar and utilizing Psychic Recharge before Robin has the ability to get Garbotoxin online. But we'll have to see. Robin had the Bridget on turn one in the last game. If he can do that again, Jeff could be in a little bit of trouble. And we see a lot of different variations of the Malamar deck. Uh, some of them don't even play Bridget at all, and Jeff's version is one of those. He does not play Bridget, uh, unlike a lot of these other decks at the World Championships, like we saw in Robin's deck, opting to play Lily instead. Mm -hmm. But he does start off with a Professor Sycamore, has two NK, and already goes straight for the Marshadow GX. So Jeff is going to be looking to put on a lot of pressure this game and force Robin to have some answers very quickly. Yeah, the game plan from Jeff a little bit clearer in this game number two with that Marshadow already on the bench and beginning to power it up. We can see that he's looking to take some fast knockouts with this, but we're going to have to you know, see which Pokemon he decides to send to that discard pile to be able to utilize its attacks with Marshadow. I don't think Peerless 100 Blows is going to win in this game. Uh, yes, he does not play Fighting Energy. <laughs> So we do see an Ultra Ball for a third NK. This is a perfect start so far for Jeff. Got a bunch of NK down, got an energy attachment on an attacker. He is giving himself the best chance to win in this matchup. Uh, he was debating whether or not to play that extra Ultra Ball to get another Pokemon out, and he decided to do it. All right, there is the Bridget turn one. Another great start from Robin. Bridget on the first turn, going to be able to get a bunch of Zerua out and maybe a Trubbish or two as well. This is always a, a big question when you play Bridget on the first turn. How many Trubbish should you be getting? How many Zerua should you try to get out? Uh, it can vary whether you go first or second. And now that Jeff has an attacker with an energy on it already, we might see Robin go for double Trubbish. Double trouble, double trubbish here on the bench. And we saw how effective both versions of Garboder were for Robin in that last game, getting Garbotoxin online very early, shutting off Psychic Recharge for Jeff, and then, of course, that Trashland Garboder taking some knockouts as well. So getting the two trubbish online early makes sense. I wonder if Robin looked through and discovered that his town map was prized. Shutting a single tier. <laughs> the lack of prize knowledge we're going to have this game. Well, we're going to have the prize knowledge. <laughs> he won't. Yeah. So looking good so far for both players. We should have an excellent game two here in the finals. And a third Zerua coming down as well. You love to see a more even game state here, especially in the finals of the Masters Division World Championships. I would love to go to game three in this one. Me too. It's like Robin's going to pass the turn, and now it'll be on Jeff to make a move here. Uh, if he can, he should try to get a knockout, perhaps on one of those Trubbish, to prevent Garbotoxin from shutting him down. Um, problem is he did Ultra Ball away one of those Guzma on the previous turn, and he only plays three instead of the typical four. So he's going to have a hard time finding enough Guzma in this game to constantly go after those uh, Garbotoxin, Garboder, and he might just have to attack the active in this situation. All right, well, the Mewtwo GX is in the discard for Jeff. With two energy on Marshadow, he can use Super Absorption for 60 damage. Yeah, he attached to the benched Marshadow. Um, he can actually just use the full burst 30 times two would have been a knockout on Zerua, but you do want to get that second energy so you can threaten mm -hmm. for bigger attacks. And I think he's going to need to find, well, there is a float stone. He will be able to attack if he wants to. He'll get, a, draw. he'll get a quick knockout, but 
it does put that Mark Shadow GX in danger. Okay, so how could Robin take that revenge knockout on the Mark Shadow GX again? Last game, we saw him with a Zoroark, a double colorless, a full bench, and a choice ban, and that was enough. Yeah, I mean, that still does it. Um, there are not enough item cards in the discard pile for Trash Lanch to get there quite yet, but now with that Float Stone, Robin could also have the out of Trash Lanch with a uh, Field Blower, discarding the Float Stone plus a Choice Band. That would get him a knockout, but this is a lot to ask for in the early part of the game. It's very possible Robin would just be happy uh, setting up Garbo Toxin on the next turn and taking it a little slow. We do see a couple of not so useful cards in hand for Robin. Enhanced Hammer is going to be trade fodder this game, second Bridget as well. So Mar Shadow GX coming out using that Shadow Hunt ability to copy one of Mewtwo GX's attacks. And once again, Jeff gets the first knockout of the game. We'll see if it ends up like the last one or if Jeff can press the advantage here with this turn two knockout. A similar situation to last game. We know it did not end up going all that well for Jeff, so he's going to need to keep up this pressure. Mysterious treasuring away the Bridget and looking for Tapu Lele for that Wonder Tag ability, grabbing Professor Sycamore off of that. Indeed, we do see a second Mysterious Treasure as well, and you can see why Robin is playing four Mysterious Treasure in this deck and zero Ultra Ball. Uh, if he had two Ultra Ball in his hand right here, this play would have been much more awkward. He would have just had to discard too many cards, and it wouldn't have been a very efficient turn. With Mysterious Treasure, he's only discarding one card at a time. He's able to search out Tapu Lele GX and then Garboder and still have cards to play and then play a supporter card. And he's discarding two useless cards in this case. Has a double colorless that he can then attach, and he still needs to stick a more into... Some very good cards. Needs a couple Zoroark or Evo Soda to get those Zoroark, but in a pretty solid spot now. Yeah, and even Rescue Stretcher, he's got the full bench. All he needs is Zoroark GX and the Choice Band to take this knockout. Evo Soda gets in the Zoroark as well as just drawing that Zoroark. Double puzzle of time. Ooh. There's the Choice Band and the Zoroark. That's going to be the knockout on Marshadow GX. History is repeating itself here in game number two. See the first trade. What else does he draw into? A third puzzle of time. There is Choice Band, and he can float stone onto his Garbotoxin Garboder. A perfect second turn from Robin Schultz. It's going to take a two prize knockout, lock down the abilities, and he is in firm control here. We might be seeing a world champion soon, Cora. This is looking almost exactly like what happened last game. Bridget, turn one, the Zoroark with the double colorless and choice band for the Marshadow knockout on turn two. And even that Garbotoxin Garboder is active. Jeff just has fallen so far behind, so fast from what looks like an amazing and potentially game-winning start. But now we might see Robin's undefeated streak continue. Jeff's gonna start off with an Acrobike. He finds a rescue stretcher to get that Marshadow GX. He does have Field Blower in hand, so he can get his abilities back this turn. Can he power up that Mar Shadow GX? A big attack he can use this turn if he's able to get Dawnwing's Necrozma GX in his discard pile is that Moon's Eclipse GX. Uh, you can only use it if your opponent has fewer prize cards remaining than you, and basically you get immunity to your opponent's attacks on the following turn. Can't take any damage. So that could be a huge swing in this game if Jeff is able to pull it off. That is a big if, but we just saw Robin do absolutely incredible things on his second turn. Jeff needs to respond with something equally fantastic here. Rescue Stretcher for that Marsh Shadow back on the bench, but needs a way to get Dawnwing's Necrozma into the discard pile. Yeah, and that's just the perfect situation. He could also just copy Mewtwo GX's attacks as well. We do see Max Elixir, so he's going to get one energy onto the Marsh Shadow GX. He was able to take Max Elixir out of his prize cards with that first knockout. He has one Malamar already with a Psychic Recharge, and I believe a Tapu Lele GX in hand, so this is going to be a great turn for Jeff. We could see three energy on the Marsh Shadow. 
bring that up, and then Psy Strike GX would be... That would just be 10 damage short, actually. Well, times two for weakness. Oh, it, is, uh, it is many damage now over what it needs. <laughs> so now Tapu Lele going to wonder tag. What does Jeff go for? He has his second field blower in hand. Uh, with such a low hand size, he would love to just play Professor Sycamore, draw seven cards, but he knows he cannot afford to discard that second field blower. A little bit unfortunate that he has both of them at the same time. So with that, definitely going to go for Cynthia instead. I think Jeff understands, probably not going to win this game if I don't have that second field blower. And we do see the Instruct Oranguru. And this is a big Cynthia for six cards here. Jeff still doesn't have the energy required to get a knockout on the Zorok GX, so he'll need to find either a Malamar or a Psychic Energy just to keep up the pace in this game. Does find that field blower yet again. Well, he does find Mysterious Treasure and an Acrobike. Uh, if Dawn Wings Necrozma is in his top two cards, we could see a pretty explosive turn. He's going to go for the Acrobike first. Look at the top two cards. Pick one, discard the other. And there's the Dawn Wings Necrozma. He hits it. Are you kidding me? That is incredibly fortunate. Wow, I guess that's why you play Acrobike. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he's playing three of them in the deck. Mysterious Treasure is going to get that second Malamar. Double Psychic Recharge onto the Mars Shadow, and Moon's Eclipse GX will be the knockout on the Zoroark and will provide protection for that Mars Shadow GX going into the next turn. Jeff could not throw that Dawnwings Necrozma in, in the discard pile quickly enough. <laughs> Uh, he does have this mysterious treasure trying to figure out what to discard, but we're certainly going to see a second Malamar at this point. Psychic Recharge onto the Mars Shadow, and Jeff is going to take a two-price swing. Now he'll be in the lead, and Robin actually has zero Jor Zorark GX in play after this. And he's got a lot of cards, and a lot of good cards, but no Zorark GX in play yet. I got a feeling we're going to see a lot of them next turn, though. I think this has just been a clinic on the most powerful things that these respective decks can do. By turn two, we had an ability lock and we had trades active for Robin. And by turn two for Jeff, we've got a powered up type advantage Mars Shadow utilizing GX attacks from Donglings Necrozma and a pair of Malamar on the bench to boot. Picture perfect start from Jeff. And uh, this is what it takes to get to the finals of the World Championships. Everything going smoothly. Here comes Mars Shadow GX once again using that Shadow Hunt ability to use a different Pokemon's attack in the discard pile. We are going to see Dawnwing's Necrozma's GX attack, Moon's Eclipse, and Jeff goes down to three prize cards. And Robin cannot damage that Mars Shadow on the next turn. means that it's very possible that this Mars Shadow can take another knockout on the next turn for Jeff, and that is Robin's worst nightmare. He won game number one because he was able to knock out that Mars Shadow the turn after it took its own knockout, and then he was able to spiral his own aggression from there. But here Jeff has that protection for this turn, and this Mars Shadow is going to get a two-for-one at the very least. Absolutely. And we actually see Jeff has the other field blower in his hand. He's in such a great position. The only way Robin can take a knockout this turn is by playing Guzma. And that means he can't play N in the same turn. So Jeff's hand is going to be undisrupted. He's going to get two turns in a row to attack with Mars Shadow. And we are going to see a very tight finish here in game two. Robin did find the town map out of his prize cards. So his prizes are face up. There we go. He got it out of the prizes. <laughs> All right, it is looking like a Zerua, a Trubbish. What's it gonna be? It's an N and a mysterious treasure in the prizes for Robin. Well, that N is actually very important. Uh, if he takes a knockout here, he's gonna wanna take that N because Jeff's gonna respond with a knockout. Uh, Cora, I think we are headed to a situation we have seen plenty of times, the old N to one. Old faithful, <laughs> we can call it. Old, not going to be around much longer. Yep. But that end to one has won Robin 
Well, he won him the game in uh, top, top four, four yeah. against Clive. Yep, this might be the last time we see N being played at the World Championships. Could go out with a bang. Uh, looks like Robin's going to trade away an N he has in his hand right now. Parallel City would probably just result in the Tapu Lele and maybe that Inke being taken off of the bench for Jeff. Probably Oranguru. So that's tough. To get rid of that. That's a tough call. The Inke has a float stone, which is pretty important. Lots of decisions to be made here for both players still. Uh, Robin does have those two puzzle of time in hand. So he can take any two cards from his discard pile, put them into his hand. We we'll have to see what he wants to get here. Uh, I'm going to guess for sure a double colorless energy so he can attack with his Zorak GX. And perhaps a second Zorak GX to go with it. Now it looks like we see Mysterious Treasure. Uh, he does need to find Guzma this turn still. Okay. Mysterious Treasure and Evo Soda. Evo Soda can get another Zoroark GX in play. Yep, so we're going to see the Evo Soda first, getting a second Zoroark GX. I wonder if Robin's just going to settle for using Trash Alanch on this turn. But depending on how many item cards are in Jeff's discard pile, we could actually see Trash Alanch knocking out Tapu Lele GX. And that would mean Robin is down to two prize cards, which would actually put him in a winning position. I'm just not sure how many items there are in Jeff's discard pile. Well, I think he's played to... a ton. No. I mean, we saw him with Mysterious Treasure, Acro Bike, Field Blower, Rescue Stretcher. Mm. Finds double colorless energy. There's, there's certainly some items in there, but how many is the question? It looks like Robin's a man with a plan here, though. We will find out what that plan is. Uh, I think this is 100% grabbing Tapu Lele GX for a Guzma to take a knockout on this turn. The question is, what does he go after? I guess we'll find out very shortly. It's a tough call. Knocking out the Tapu Lele sets him up for a potential game-winning situation on the next turn if he can knock out the Marshadow GX. I think that's just what he's got to go with. Jeff's, Jeff's got Robin very likely on a two-turn clock here, so Robin needs to set up his own. All right, so we do see Guzma, and Robin is deciding to go with the Trash Lanch Garboder, and yeah, going after Tapu Lele GX. Is it enough for a knockout, though? He also has that Float Stone in his hand. Let's see how many items there are. There there's, are oh, there's a lot. There are 10 items in the discard pile for Jeff. That means we will see a Trash Lanch knockout here. More than enough, and... This puts Jeff potentially in a game-winning scenario. Yeah, Robin going to go down to two prize cards here, taking down Tapu Lele GX. He can find a way to take out the Marshadow GX on the next turn. He'll be the world champion. We'll see if Jeff can stop him. All right, Mysterious Treasure and the Trubbish out of the prizes, leaving the N and the Zorua. This might not be coming down to N after all. No, Robin might not need it. Looked like he was pretty behind after Jeff was able to hit pay dirt off of that last turn, but Robin has managed to put himself at an advantage yet again. It might be Jeff trying to end Robin down to a low hand size. I'm not sure if he has one in his hand, though. He does have the second field blower to regain access to his abilities. It also allows Robin to regain access to his trade abilities. However, if Jeff is looking at an end to two to potentially stall for some time in this game, he's not going to want to knock off that float stone. So we see Ultra Ball from Jeff. Um, one of the problems here is his bench is a little clogged. Robin not playing Parallel City actually was a pretty big deal. Uh, Jeff would have loved to discard some of those bench Pokemon. And now he's stuck in a spot where he would love to get a one prize attacker going here and also power up a big GX for the following turn that doesn't rely on abilities. I just don't know if he'll have the resources to pull it off. Uh, we might be seeing him attack with Malamar for the knockout here. 
then if Robin gets another Pokemon tool on that Garbotoxin Garboder, the Marshadow GX will be rendered useless, cannot use its ability any longer. So Jeff's going to have to find a creative way to give himself a chance in this game. That is definitely a kicker there. Marshadow utilizes an ability to be able to copy basic Pokemon attacks from the discard pile. Garbotoxin shuts that off as well as the Psychic Recharge from Malamar. And Jeff is going to have to get creative here, so Field Blower will allow for abilities this turn. He does have the third Field Blower. There we see the Mimikyu. He can use Copycat to copy the Trashalange attack that was just used. That is the one prize Pokemon he can use to get this knockout. He's going to force Robin to have Guzman next turn to win. Uh, the problem I'm just seeing is, does Jeff have a turn beyond this one? Is it just hope that Robin can't get Garbotoxin up and running again? Kind of seems like that's the case here, and I don't I mean, believe Robin has a tool in hand right now, but oh, he he's going to go for the, find it. He's going to go for the Guzma right here. He's going to go after the oh. Garbotoxin Garboder. Okay. He's making sure he gets abilities on the next turn. And this that's is... Smart. Very interesting. Now Jeff goes to one prize card, but that means if Robin Schultz can find Guzma, he is the world champion. Robin looking through his discard pile, seeing exactly what he's used so far. He has one more Tapu Lele GX. He can Mysterious Treasure for it and win the world championships. One on the bench. None in the discard pile. And of note, Robin plays two Guzma, one in the discard. This is it, folks. We see the Guzma in his deck. Is the Lele there? It, there is. it is. Wonder Tag. Guzma, and that is it. Robin Schultz is the 2018 Masters Division World Champion. In two incredibly convincing games without dropping a single series over the course of this entire weekend, Robin Schultz the first Masters Division World Champion hailing from Germany. What an incredible performance from him. Congratulations, of course, go out to Jeff Polenk for making it to the World Championship Finals in his first ever appearance. But today is Robin's day, and he is your 2018 Masters Division World Champion. You typically don't see a lot of emotion out of Robin, but I think the well is open. Uh, he's overcome with happiness. I mean, this is what you work for. This is what all the practice and play testing goes into. He played perfectly, flawlessly throughout this weekend and earned